Can you build a CPU and GPU water loop for $50? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a look at a cheap water cooling loop setup. Now, this is also for the CPU and the GPU since I've been getting a lot of requests to do something like this. So today I'm going to quickly go over how much the parts cost, where I source them from, which includes places like eBay, Amazon, and also my local hardware store, and how much they cost. And let's get on with the tally. Okay, so now we're gonna really briefly check for a signal off this here. And since there's actually, you know, there's just the coolers pretty much on there with no water going through, we're gonna have to be very quick. So we're just gonna see if there's a signal coming out just to make sure that there is no problem. So we're gonna use our little friendly USB drive here. And just to, damn, that one don't work properly. Okay, so as soon as there's a signal going, we are going to shut it off at the main. Just to make sure there's no problems. Come on, signal, 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 hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, no signal yet. Damn, we're gonna have to shut that off because it's getting way too hot to touch. All right, I'm gonna have to figure this out. Okay, so we've got the graphics card here and the power supply on a different motherboard and CPU. So we're gonna test that quickly to just rule out one thing at a time to see what it could be. So hopefully it's not the graphics card because that is really good. Like I've seal, you know, got all the heat sinks on there, zip tied the cooler off and then we've got the memory in there as well all right cool awesome so 
It is the, either the motherboard or the CPU. I'm guessing it's the CPU or the motherboard doesn't have the update on the BIOS to support the uh, E5640. So we're gonna try and put this CPU into the other motherboard and then see if we can get a signal. If we can, then we've got to update the BIOS to support the E5640. So let's get that on the way. All right, so we're going for round two this time, different CPU. And we're gonna see if we can get a signal this time. Hopefully we can. Just one stick of memory. And... Come on, come on. Please don't be a busted motherboard. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so... So we pulled the CPU off and also we pulled the heat sink off. And we can see here that this is a big problem because this doesn't have all the thermal paste on it, which means that either one of these surfaces isn't flat or the motherboard might actually need a shim. It's like, shim off already. <laughs> I don't want to make another shim. Although it worked really well on the graphics card. So we're gonna take a look now and see if we have to make a CPU shim. So yeah, it looks like it's the cooler, so we're gonna try and sand this thing down and then give it another round. All right, so that's looking a lot better than last time. I'll be happy with that. Let's get on with the BIOS update. So after a BIOS update, we are now ready finally to start completing this build.
So now we're ready to start testing the loop out and start filling it up. So what I'm going to use for this part is a different power supply and I'm actually going to use a uh, little pin here to short out the positive and negative on the 24 pin connector. And what this is going to do is every time I turn on the power supply here, it's going to turn it on and give power out to the Molex connector. And now for this part, I'm going to be using uh, my Molex to uh, two pin converter here or a, a connector. So that is just going to essentially turn it into a Molex, which I can then plug into the power supply directly. And every time I boot this up, I'm then going to have just my loop only turning on, which is exactly what I want. And you know, that's, that's one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it. If you, you can obviously use your computer if you want, but I wouldn't recommend that because if you have leaks, then you may fry something. So let's get this going and give it a try.
So there we have it, the results say everything. With the CPU, the temperatures were just simply terrible. We had 90 degrees on the standard configuration, and then even when I put a shim in there, it went up to 95 degrees. The GPU, however, did start to show a little bit of promise. When, when I overclocked it, the temperatures really didn't change. And then I did put those two Cooler Master fans on in place of the fans that I had running in by there before, and that definitely kept the heat down on the radiator. So if there's anything to come out of a cheap water looping uh, budget setup, that is don't skimp on the blocks and the pump. They're the two most crucial things that you can't get away with on skimping on. I thought that the radiator and the hosing and the reservoir did a pretty good job, and all those connections were very strong. I didn't get any leaks. But when it came to the pump and the blocks, they were just simply not good enough, and they were very far from being even remotely good for a 24-7 setup. And when you compare that to an air cooling setup, I would rather take the air cooling setup any day of the week, even in price performance, compared to this loop not to mention all in ones will absolutely kick the pants off today's loop and that if you got two 120 mil rad setups and put them on your and just zip time on your cpu and your gpu you would still have much better temperatures and results than i got here today now how about the how to and where's the tutorial on setting up a budget water cooling loop guide? Well, I'm not ready to do that yet. I need to do more R&D when it comes to water cooling setups. As you see here today, I simply got beat and I'm not used to getting beat when it comes to doing budget setups for you guys. And so this thing's got me a little bit down in that I want to get the cheapest water cooling setup possible, but at the same time, it still has to get the results. As we saw there, an all-in-one or a decent air cooling setup will get you much better results than the results that I got here today today. However, with water cooling, there is just simply a floor that you have to spend a bit of money to get to. And I mean, if you're coming in here thinking, I'll get a $5 block and that'll be, and I'll be home and hosed, then you got to think again, because as you saw with my results, I mean, this, these blocks were just simply fail besides the quality control. They just didn't cool that well at all. And then there was the pump as well. A cheap pump just simply couldn't stand anywhere up to a more expensive pump. And I mean, that's to be expected. I was just hoping that the results would not be worse than say an air cooling setup. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about the cheap $50 water cooling loop guide, then let me know in the comment section below. But is it possible for $50 a CPU, GPU water loop? The answer is no, in my opinion, though. If you can get the parts for cheap, especially when it comes to used parts, then maybe it is possible. So stay tuned for a proper how-to guide, and I will be getting that done in the near future. And peace out for now. Bye. Now it's, now it's finally time for the moment of truth. Will it boot? Yeah, we'll turn the power switch on this time.